All right, let's not bury the lead here. Helldivers 2 is awesome. I freaking love this game, and I did from the minute I dropped in. Helldivers 2 is a sci-fi third-person shooter pretty noticeably influenced and themed after the film Starship Troopers. Just like the American military industrial complex it brilliantly parodies, the game doesn't outright give players a reason to be traveling from world to world other than to spread glorious democracy. But Helldivers 2 is also what's known as a live service game. And if you don't know why that matters and why Helldivers 2 is way better than most of them out there, then you might not think it's a big deal. But rest assured, it is. Because just like the terminated bugs in this game, there are swarms of these types of games coming for us in the future, and most of them are predatory, just like these enemies. So today I want to look at Helldivers 2, which is head and shoulders better than most of the rest to see what it's doing right, and where our hard-earned, undervalued, and quickly diminishing dollars should be going. When I begrudgingly utter the phrase live service games, what comes to your mind first? Is it A, the ones with all the hotties, 2, massively multiplayer online, oh my god, be right back, I've got to do an 8 hour workday before I disappear in this raid, role playing games, also MOBAs, 3, casual experiences like Minecraft, Roblox, or Fall Guys, or 5, overpriced DLC or yearly sports game releases because they totally count? Well class, the answer is E, why are you asking me this and get out of my kitchen! If you somehow don't know what a live service game is or haven't had a clear definition of it, check this out. A game designed to steal your money oh, oh wait oops that's a uh, a game that is designed to keep players engaged and playing for as long as possible typically through in-game rewards and unlockables content drops and pay to access cosmetics slash items a big reason i haven't posted in a while is because i got burnt out from making videos and i had a really busy like real life that was going on so i needed a game that i could connect with and play with my friends luckily helldivers 2 kicks some serious ass compared to most of them it's the very definition of a game i don't typically gravitate towards and a lot of people love these games but LSGs are very divisive. Especially post-pandemic, we're all online, and what started as a simple way to improve games post-launch has quickly fallen down the capitalist spiral of monetization, and now we are left with an abundance of games as a service. Individual experiences independent of the service model do still attract swarms of fans, but many of the gaming options we live with in the current pantheon prioritize online play and want your money. Uh, I mean loyalty. Jokes aside, anything as a service products are here to stay because they produce money, money, they money, money, they Despite the expected decline of LSGs from some industry heads due to the massive market oversaturation and change in consumer trends, a recent survey and report from Griffin Gaming Partners suggests that 95% of 537 polled studios are working on or supporting some form of a live service game model. That's 510 studios! That being said, not all gases are bad or predatory, and it's worth the time to try and figure out which ones are good and which are definitely not. But first, <laughs> oh. Hello there, fellow liberty-loving patriot. Could you toss a citizenship credit to your fellow Helldiver with the most glorious like and subscribe? It's free of charge and goes a long way to helping with the making of these vids and helping other liberty-loving patriots like yourself see this PSA. Go ahead and comment your favorite part down below. Oh, you already did? <laughs> Fantastic. Well, back to the front line. Like most shooters, it's pretty easy to understand how this game works at an abstract level. You create your ship and give it a silly name like the Colossus of Family Values, resist the temptation to buy credits, and then choose your starting loadout of weapons, armor, grenades, and most glorious stratagems, the calling card of Helldivers. Stroll to the big board and then choose whether you want to fight the buggers from Ender's Game or the robots from Terminator. Then dive and go forth, you glorious icon of all heroes day. And that's when the fun begins. This game is absolute butter! Every weapon you use is a dollop of sour cream. The graphics and frame rate, a phenomenal cream cheese! And, well look, I'ma be real with you, while I haven't unlocked everything, fought every single crazy monster, or even got good enough to play on the higher difficulties, I can tell you this game is just a delicious smackerel of dull whip boy! Mmm! Yummy! Players are given the opportunity to choose between different missions where they activate towers, blow shit sky high, or simply drop in to do a lot of damage. <laughs> That's a lot of emotional damage. If you don't pay attention and only complain about the friendly fire always being on, you'll easily miss a lot of the impressive tactical details the game has to offer. Some guns allow different rates of fire. Crouching and going prone reduces recoil and kickback. If you get hit with a blast or attack in a specific way, you can develop a leg injury and suddenly you can't run anymore. Enemies with armor will intentionally hide their big dumb hit me buttons if you shoot at them directly, or they'll leap at you like a head crab and ah! Reloading in the middle of a magazine will cause you to lose what remaining ammo was in the mag. And yeah, you know, 
that's how guns work. Yep. What a concept. But the stratagems are the whipped cream on this game's strawberry. Man, what's with all the cream metaphors? Stratagems are additional resources you can call down during missions for more powerful loadouts or support. They're categorized into a few groups like big boom sticks, airplane boom booms, gears of war orbital laser boom booms, turrets of varying effectiveness, Massive Boom Boom Robot Boys, and Anti Boom Boom. Naturally, there is a pretty aggressive meta loadout like there are in any other competitive games, but as long as you work together with your squad, pretty much everything is effective. Really, the only immediate negative thing I can say is that there are so many options and loadouts and metas and stratagems and ah! that, and it definitely does just take a couple hours to get used to loading all those stratagems and using them in conjunction with your team to effectively get through the map. Just dropping a pin down sometimes feels like an entire side quest. The game is also hard as hell and requires you to be tactical with your squad, but this is one of the most fun, shockingly realistic physics-wise and extremely responsive shooters I've ever played. The shit feels great, and for that, I award it a stellar 23 out of 25. Okay, let's keep this part brief because the story is only a small component of what's going on and because if I do this too long, the Ministry of Truth will be right on my back. I mentioned earlier how this game is a parody of the American military industrial complex, but that's more commenting on the caricature of the gung-ho soldiers presented through hilarious dialogue influenced by Paul Verhoeven films. What plot there is in this game is typically communicated through environmental storytelling and connecting the game to real-world, fascist, hyper-nationalist military states. This is certainly a parody of how American-based colonization and its military force could be if we collectively allowed fascists to take over, which, you know, is distinctly possible. Worker logs, signs, and more are scattered across the various planet outposts, suggesting these terminated and automaton planets were forcefully occupied. We aren't going to examine every single treasonous radio broadcast or piece of propaganda, though they are all hilarious and we easily could. And while I do adore the satirical political stance of this game and hope that people can see it for what it is, a condemnation of real-world military colonialism by highlighting people who are less worried about excessive warmongering and more about this, really I think the easiest thing to point out here is just the Element 710 missions. You dive down to reactivate these drilling stations and I mean, okay, look, look, come here. Come here, look, look, look. You ever done that thing where you grab a calculator and type in 5318008, flip it over and snicker as it spells out boobies? Sure you have. All right, now type out 710 and flip it over. Remember those wars in the Middle East America escalated? Does this look familiar? It just fucking spells oil. The best part here is that the developers at Arrowhead are totally in on the joke along with the community. When Flying Terminate Bug showed up in the game without any sort of release notes, game director Johan Pilstadt tweeted that basically these were propaganda from Bug sympathizers and image manipulation by traitors. This is what it looks like when developers are culturally aware and are understanding how to interact with their intended audience. Something that we'll touch on a little bit more later with Joel. But let's just say for now that for a story that basically has no active plot, there's a lot of great world building that goes on in the background. And this game for itself deserves a 19 out of 25. Immediate positive points in favor of Helldivers 2 here. Right away, it gives you a friends list in-game. Diving into a fresh mission or even joining one in progress can be stunningly quick, and even with crossplay turned on, I haven't really seen a whole lot of lags or disconnects or anything like that. Players adorably bad, freely habitat the host ship before they jump into a mission. And even with all of the enemies on screen at once, I haven't noticed a whole lot of lags or frame rate dips or anything like that. I don't know how programming net codes work, but they clearly have like Spider-Man weaving things together behind the scenes, or at least one really roided out grandma. A couple of immediate negative points. Sometimes games can randomly crash at the very end, and 30 minutes worth of progress can just be completely out the window despite a really good connection most of the time. And I know this game's only been out for like a month or so, so they're doing the best they can with how early it is. Also, there's this really toxic habit of players kicking people from their teams because they don't meet a meta loadout. And I mean, come on, man. Hey, man, that's not cool. Like, I know we're all tryhards here, but that's just plain rude. But don't let a few bad apples spoil our creamy apple pie. Most of the community is hilarious, and the comment sections of YouTube shorts or Reddit pages are just host to tons of people method acting. To highlight just how epic the community is and how they're really turning out for this game, just look at the case of Malevolon Creek. Nestled deep in the heart of automaton territory, this planet is a dark, dense jungle straight out of an 80s action film. Even when you've cleansed a base or destroyed their warships, you may find yourself in the dark, only for a host of glowing red eyes to surround you, following you, and tracing you with every breath you take. Oh yeah, and the planet is as hard as my democratic hot dog wiener, dude! Yeah, fuck 
all that because as I was finishing editing this video, the Helldivers community army completely cleared out the automaton threat and April 3rd is now known as Malevolon Creek Memorial Day. These Helldivers absolutely yated the automatons out of nowhere like Luka Doncic just sinking the craziest of three-pointers to win a basketball game. Because nothing says patriotism like sports. The online community for Helldivers 2 is just awesome. And hey, remember Joel? Yeah. There's a guy actually at Arrowhead who has the title of Game Master and is telling all of the Terminids and Automatons basically where to go. And yeah, I'm aware it might not just be one person, it, it, but still, the point remains. There's a Game Master. We have an actual DM basically directing the flow of traffic and understanding how we get our issues and our orders assigned to us. It's so cool. Image. How do you want to do that? Yeah! <laughs> So yeah, the online experience is mostly positive, and the community, while not perfect, is very strong and seems very dedicated to winning this war. Something that the Star Wars Battlefront launch really needs to take some notes on because, oh my god. I award the community and online play of Helldivers 2 a 23 out of 25. 15 bucks, little man. But let's just state the facts. One, Helldivers 2 is not free. It is $40 at its most baseline cost, making it less analogous to Fortnite and more analogous to something like Overwatch. Two, it does have in-game purchases via super credits for limited time items and to immediately unlock premium content. Three, all equipment upgrades, stratagems, banners, titles, etc. are unlocked using different currencies. That all sounds pretty standard fare in favor of corporate greed. But if we dissect each of these points one by one, we find that the value you're extracting from this game actually might be much higher than what a lot of free games have to offer. Yes, everything is locked behind currencies. Medals for equipment, super credits for the premium content, and samples slash requisition slips for the stratagems. But the beautiful thing is that you don't have to spend real money on those currencies. And aside from super credits, you can't. The only way to earn sample slips and medals is to play the dang game. Explore the map to find them and complete personal objectives. The better you play and higher difficulty you climb, the more you're going to earn. Wow! Sniff sniff! What's that? Something nice? Isn't the air in here so fresh? So super credits are the only bonus currency there is and are only applicable towards premium items and the steel veteran cutting edge war bonds. But hey, about that? You can just unlock the premium stuff with super credits you earn in game. You find them in the map. And the limited time items aren't that much better than the stuff in the standard war bond. This revelatory business model in the face of a predatory industry full of profiteers ties back to something the director Peelstead said on Twitter about microtransactions, stating, quote, you have to earn the right to monetize. I truly believe that. If people want to support this title, they have an option, but we are never forcing anyone to do so. Wow. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm the guy. To see someone brazenly make this move while still developing a game that is fun as hell is kind of a freaking miracle. So now we return to the initial point about value. The game is fun as hell. The story, while taking a back seat, is a brilliant parody and leaves you a lot of room for thought. The community and developers together have made a really pleasant online experience, and there are basically no predatory microtransactions. This game is definitely worth $40. Helldivers 2 is an unexpected sequel slash reboot of a top-down game turned third-person shooter. It lives in the vacuous realm between Counter-Strike, Gears of War, and Call of Duty, which is to say that it doesn't focus on story and it can feel overwhelming, but man, are there lots of ways to shoot your shot. With live service games only projected to increase in quantity, it's hard to say if any level of quality in the industry will be sustainable. But while big studios like Warner Brothers notice a community's loyalty to something like the Arkham games and choose to exploit it, turning a highly respected studio like Rocksteady into a sweatshop, Arrowhead seems to be the prophesied salmon swimming against the current. So hopefully, even if you're one of the 100 million dead Helldivers in the hunt to spread glorious democracy, hopefully at least you're having fun on Malevolent Creek instead of getting ripped off by another game. Just remember that there are a lot of corporations that are out there to try and steal and profit off your money. The nasty little bugs they are. Robots in suits sent to destroy your way of life. Scenes like these are happening all over the world right now. You could be next. That is, unless you decide to make the most important decision of your life.
Prove to yourself that you have the strength and courage to pump money into a game that deserves your time and effort. And be free. Join the Helldivers. Oh yeah, and just stop playing superhero games. They're all total bullshit. Emotional damage.